Smartphones have revolutionized how we talk to each other, how we play with each other, and how we help each other. So why not how we science each other? Hey there, science peeps. Trace here for D News. Thanks for watching. Let's say science needs your help. Or sometimes you need science's help. But who are you going to call? And it's not the ghost peoples. Instead, let's do the science ourselves. This isn't a new idea. In 1999, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence released a screensaver that let internet-connected computers all over the world help SETI churn through massive amounts of data. When the computer was idle, the screensaver would pop up and data analysis would begin. It was really simple. But distributed computing was just one way that citizens could help research and science. Today, scientists all over the world are beginning to harness the power of these little computers that we carry in our collective pockets, sometimes called smartphones. And they're crowdsourcing their scientific research. Accessories are being used to monitor the movement of bats and birds, map meteoroids and track temperatures, and some apps are even being used to treat depression using self-help treatments administered via smartphone. But one of my favorites is taking advantage of something that we already do, taking pictures of wildlife. The Networked Organisms and Habitats Project has an app that lets people take photos of plants and animals and then send it to Project NOAA for identification. You can even complete missions like logging GPS locations for flocks of birds or photographing specific insects near your home. Cameras are like a superpower for your smartphone. Smartphone lenses are built into the devices themselves, but often little attachments can be purchased to add wide angles or zoom functions or in a science case, magnification. A three cent lens was developed for use with smartphones in classrooms. That's way cheaper than a microscope. Normally, schools would have to buy microscopes for each of their students and many would have to share because they can cost as much as $10,000 each. But for simple experiments, these three cent lenses allow for up to 120 time magnification, revealing cellular level detail for less than the cost of a single text message. Taking that idea even further, researchers at the University of California, Los Angeles, developed a tool that allows any smartphone to analyze DNA. DNA is tiny. I mean, even stretched out, it's only two nanometers long. That's 50,000 times thinner than the width of human hair. So the device comes with a lens that magnifies that little bugger. The lens is housed in a 3D printed attachment and pictures can be taken using the app and the phone's camera. Then the app communicates with UCLA servers and analyzes the DNA data. The whole process takes 10 seconds and according to their announcement could help diagnose various types of cancers and nervous system disorders such as Alzheimer's as well as detect drug resistance in infectious diseases. This is all in the field using a cell phone. Field testing is a huge market for smartphone accessories. And thanks to other attachments, doctors in Rwanda have been able to test for potentially deadly viruses like HIV and syphilis without a lab or even without electricity. The device, developed by researchers from more than a half dozen universities, government agencies, laboratories, and companies, pricks a finger, like testing for diabetes, and then performs an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA. It's a test that uses the power from the battery in the phone to run pumps and analyze the results. Normally, blood has to be collected and sent to the lab, but this $34 accessory has a tiny vacuum chamber that's mechanically operated that can accept pre-filled cartridges of reagents, which allow it to automatically complete the tests in only 15 minutes right on site. When we add up all the conveniences for researchers, it's easy to see how these smartphone accessories could change science forever. But what about you? Do you use any science apps? Recommend some down in the comments. And if you want to know more about some of the topics we cover here on D News, you should check out my new show, Test Tube Plus, where I spend a whole week on a single science topic. It's really super fun. Here's an episode from our series about senses. We have way more than five senses, just so you know. We have the sense of pressure, which is different from the sense of touch. You can feel the pressure of something on your skin, even if you can't actually feel that thing. Subscribe to my new show, check it out, tell me what you think over on Twitter at Trace Dominguez, and thanks for watching.